advanced revenue management, advanced cost amortization. All right, so we are up to 6.7. This is the last video around revenue arrangement management, and then we're going to move on to revenue recognition plans. All right, on sweet answer 49242. All right, 29242. When you check the accounting preference, enable advanced cost amortization. You can accrue and amortize. Sorry about the bell in the background there. Eligible sales costs associated with a contract. You record the eligible sales costs on the revenue arrangement and revenue elements in the base currency. When you save the revenue arrangement, a deferred cost journal entry is automatically created to accrue the costs. The amortization of these costs is tracked on the revenue recognition plan in a subtab called cost amortization plan. A deferred expense roll forward report is available. Right, so let's quickly go here. So here's one of my revenue arrangements that I've used in one of my previous videos. So if I go value revenue plan, right, and let's say I want to go and look at that plan. And then I scroll down and here you can see on the plan revenue tab, there's sub tab called cost amortization. And if I make that a little bit bigger, you can see here that's pro rata because it's not a full month. And then it runs it out. All right. Um, and I will, in my later, I will be making uh, videos about all the reports. This is a very important report that I'll discuss then. Three types of el eligible sales costs can be accrued and amortized. You must designate expense and deferred expense accounts for each type of cost. All right, direct contract acquisition costs, including all direct expenses incurred during the sales process, for a revenue contract obligation, such as sales commissions and marketing expenses. Location account settings, contract acquisition expense account, contract acquisition expense source account, and contract acquisition deferred expense account fields on the revenue arrangement header. You can set the defaults for these accounts on the accounting preferences. I've already made a video about that. Where to record costs? Contract acquisition cost amount base currency field on the revenue arrangement header. All right, so let's go and look at the revenue arrangement header. And contract acquisition cost. Contract acquisition cost amount base currency. All right, so there it is. I've got $100 in there. Okay. Um, and then the second one, item specific resale expenses for items that are not inventory items. Deferred expense account and expense account in the accounting sub tab of the item record. Where to record costs, item resale cost amount. Field on the revenue element. All right, so let's go to see. Right, there it is. All right, so I will in a moment go and add that, but I will do it together. And then the last one is implementation labor expense. Labor expense account and labor deferred expense account fields on the revenue element. Item labor cost amount. So let's go and see. And that's that one right there. Okay. For detailed information about the components of advanced costs, see the following topics. All right, so... I will now go and do an example in a second. Right, so let's go and edit this revenue arrangement. And let's go. Okay, I'm back. It's taken me a bit of time to figure out why that field wasn't available um, uh, for this item resale cost. Um, it turns out that this item that I was using on that sales order and ultimately the revenue arrangement and element is a for sale item. 
So it does not have all the required fields. It does not have expense account, right? So I've set up um, a resale item. So it does now have this account. I then went and quickly created a sales order. The revenue arrangement was created. And now when I go and edit this revenue arrangement, that field is now available. So let's say that's ten dollars. Let's say that's ten dollars. No, let's make that twenty so it's different. Uh, labor expense account should be around the five five somewhere. So let's make it that one. Labor deferred expense. Right. That's okay that and let's save that. So there should now be an automatic journal created. So I'm just going to pause for a second and give it a moment to run. All right, so let's go and see if we can see if that journal did post like it should. All right, so there's my list of journals. That looks like a new journal. All right, and there it is. Taking the 20 out of other, out of miscellaneous and put it into deferred experience. Depends. And so uh, we now go look at this revenue plan. And we go look at this. You can see there's a journal in there. Right. Um, uh, yes, so it's done both labor and the deferred expense account.